Hey everybody, welcome back. Well, another wild day on light volume. Bitcoin trying to get up there. We're going to clean up all these levels and just talk about Wix City up here. We know that Wix are price rejection. And every single time that looks like we're about to lift, we're just not doing that. So if we drop this level right here, we're going to put this magnet on for a second. And then we just take a look at it. We're not breaking out. We're actually just up and down all over the place. And it's not really what you want to see. So I'm going to drop that there. There's your range. Now, when you have a range like that and you're unable to lift through it, let me show you what this looks like when we dive into those numbers. And you can see it very clearly here during the day trading, right? Just for the past two days and how we're hitting these levels over and over again. What would be troubling to me on the Bitcoin sign for those that are trading it is the fact that support down here is starting to become resistance. We're going to go through this, how it's affecting the underlying names and some other interesting developments today, to say the least. But let's get into the ES and take a look at how this is playing out. So very clearly, the ES is breaking out right at the end of the day in the last 45 minutes. The question is why? Well, you have GDP tomorrow. Uh, the way that we're acting today with financials is leave something to be desired. Like, obviously, somebody thinks they know something, and we can talk about that in a little bit. But this is just out of nowhere, just an absolute rip right around that 3.30, started around 3.15 where you, you stopped going down and just exploded, went right through resistance, went through the previous resistance of the day, and just didn't, never looked back. Um, really hard to find anything says, you know, to say anything technical about that. Uh, didn't really build uh, at all today. It just ripped the end of the day. And you can see it even more clearly here when we drop it into a one minute. So there's not really a lot to say there. Note the cues. Uh, the cues have gone from the same exact move at the end of the day to, you know, oh, we're just going to fall apart. I'll take this magnet off now. Um, as always, I appreciate your comments. It helps me create content. And I do appreciate you sharing these. Since I don't run ads in the middle of these, the algorithm tends to uh, you know, not show these. So that is made up by you sharing and your comments. And the comments just help me make it better. But if you take a look right here, like look at, our, look at these levels. There's literally nothing that someone's going to tell me that just, oh, by the way, we're definitely going to stop right there. And we're certainly going to bounce. Uh, it's just a dip and rip. And there's very little to say about it. It would be one thing if you built like you were building here and then you followed through and you'd say, oh, well, we have this base. You had nothing here except another retest of a level that you held three or four times. It's not exactly something that would light the world on fire or get somebody in. Take a look at RTY. And you can see at the end of the day, uh, tell me something leaked without telling me something leaked. So what, what could this be? Could it be GDP? What would make us stronger here? What would make the bond market absolutely implode? So we're going to turn this into a line. And as this drops, it means that what? Yield is getting lower. It means they are buying bonds. And you can see rough here from Tuesday at 1030, they've done nothing but buy bonds. This is actually a much steeper move on the 10-year than it looks. Just FYI, what you would do is just drop that down there and you're going to get you know, that 1.77% move in bonds. It doesn't look like much, but there it is. You have a 2% move in bond prices, meaning as the yield drops, bond prices go up. Now, if we just take a look at this on a reset, Let's clean these all off and then realize that, okay, we're back below that four and a quarter. That 433 seems to be a, an issue up here. And then we'll make this candlesticks again. So we can see that area up there and we can see how we're battling it over and over and over again, right? This becomes an issue. Now you're going into GDP tomorrow. After GDP tomorrow, what do we have? Then we have PCE on Friday. There's nothing that we're going to be able to trade on Friday besides the cryptos. That's really it because the market is closed on Friday. Monday is going to be a light volume day as well, as some people come off and other countries have their holidays. Now, and Monday is always a week day anyway. So that's what we have going on from an index perspective. If you take a look from the VIX, everything's fine. VIX is at 12 for some godforsaken reason, which everyone will say the VIX is broken. It's either broken or nobody cares one or the other. Now, to say that, you take a look at NVIDIA today, and this is where it gets really interesting because you saw the gamesmanship today, and there's always gamesmanship on these days, but this is, this is pretty real today, and we're going to talk about this. Uh, you have these breaks where it looks like you're going to break down, and then all of a sudden, what do you do? And you're going to do this again tomorrow, so you're going to want to pay attention to this. This is the kind of nonsense you're dealing with. Oh, we're going to break out. We're going to run. Oh, we're going to break down. And then all of a sudden, it just stops again. And someone will say, oh, well, it was very clear. I, I don't know what was clear about this today. There was nothing to me that was clear about this day at all. You know, there's nothing wrong with saying you don't know. Um, and sometimes you just don't know. I put a bunch of trades on today that I thought would work. Some of them actually did work. Uh, and some didn't, but there are days where you're going to look at this market and things are just not going to make sense. You know what you do? You get out of the way. That's what you do. 
right? When you don't know what's going to happen, you get out of the way. Now, to look at this, someone's going to say, oh, well, that was clearly going to hold 900. Was it? Because it went through it like butter. So we don't know, again, we don't know when we're going to come back, when we're going to test. To me, it seemed like this was a really good spot to try to get involved. If you could get back down to that 880 level, maybe you know hold there. I'm not so sure you're going to break the 22, but you might build in here for a period of time. So that's definitely something. But you're going into this weekend and you're going into Friday. How many names are you going to want to hold going into a PCE that you don't know? Now, worst case scenario tomorrow would be this. I'm going to walk you through it. SPY, of course, now closing at what? 523.17, and you start going through this and going, wow, that's a pretty good close. A matter of fact, that's the best close we've ever had. So now we have to talk about why, because it's certainly not tech that did that today, but why is that happening? Why do we have one of the best closes? And this is a pattern I like a lot, a breakdown and then just straight selling, followed by a new closing high. It doesn't have to be the all-time high, but those new closing highs on it usually build. You can see it even here where you drop. Let's make it this clear off and then we'll go from there. But you break out and you have all these sell bars and then you hit a new high. That's really what I like. I mean, you'll see it a lot in here because it just means that you've washed out the sellers and now you're going to move forward. And again, we're going to talk about what's driving this. But when you see this kind of stuff, you definitely want to take and pay attention to it, especially in front of a number. So you have GDP coming out. And then you have the 10-year, which for some godforsaken reason has been rallying for two days. So let's say the GDP is lighter than expected because that's what would rally the market. And you look at IWM and we look at this breakout and we realize, well, this is a multi-year high close, right? This is not a small move today, right? This is a huge move today on a multi-year close. And we could talk about the sectors in a moment, which, so which sectors are moving, which are not. But this is the highest that we have closed at any time since, what, 2022. Matter of fact, you could actually say it's probably one of the highest closes we've had since the end of 21. It's a big deal. And here we are. So is GDP going to come in weaker? Because if GDP comes in weaker, as we know, then that means that there's a better chance of them cutting rates. So what we're seeing is we're seeing the indexes move up. We're seeing the bond prices be bought, which drops yield, which means they're expecting GDP to come in what? Lighter than expected. Now, let's say that GDP does come in lighter than expected tomorrow. Let's say that's the case. GDP comes in lighter, markets rip. Friday, PCE comes out. What do we do if PCE is higher? And then the market would normally sell down on that. What do we do then? We can't do anything till Monday. So you're landlocked. That's a worst case scenario. And that's a scenario that could happen. Remember, CPI came in higher. PPI came in higher, even relative not only to itself, but to CPI. So why can't PCE come in higher? Now, there are some differences between CPI and PCE. Now, you might want to screenshot this for yourself so that you have access to this just so you know what the differences are. So highest weighted item categories for PCE and CPI. So you can see healthcare services are number one weighted here. Healthcare services are not weighted very heavily and here they have it as medical care services which is a little different but they even if you say apples to apples that's seven percent versus 16 and it's not apples to apples but just say that it is therefore that gives us a almost 2x over here shelter is combined housing is 15.9 and here we're at 32. So CPI is 32%, 32.9% there, motor vehicles and food at home. Well, financial services and insurance is in, is in PCE. Well, where is it in here? We don't have that. So what does that mean? Well, we all know the insurance premiums are going up. So is that going to be weighted on this? Is housing going to be weighted on this? How about healthcare services? Have they gone up? The answer is healthcare services have gone up. The answer is that insurance has gone up. We already know that shelter's up. So we have a situation here where we know that even though this is weighting, in housing less than here, we know that the reason for some of these moves is going to be insurance and healthcare services. Then you get food, food services, pharmaceutical, you know, motor vehicle. They actually are much lower on the motor, you know, here's motor fuel, motor vehicle parts, recreational services, education, transportation. You can see the difference, you get it. But so is that it because of that? Well, this is where it gets interesting because shelter is such a large port of part of CPI that when that weighting on CPI comes in this way, it, it tends to make us think that they're all going to be that way, but that's not really the case. So this is a graph, and this graph was done by TD Economics, and it just points out the obvious now that they cut it off here. But difference between CPI and PCE has reached highest level on record. So can we really look at PCE and CPI and say they're the same as I'm trying to do? 
Yes and no. I mean, they are showing the biggest divergence quarter versus quarter on a percentage change ever in the history that we've ever had. And this is really important to get because usually we can do this and say, oh, well, if X, then Y, you know, if X, then Y. And you're not doing that here ever since the pandemic, when we got out of whack, you really haven't been able to do that 21 after 22 and you broke out from here. That's been it. Now, what what would do that? Well, there's only a couple of things that would do that. Shelter would do that. So if we look at that and say, well, shelter would do that, and shelter would keep that differentiation, then we could surmise that since it's shelter that is the largest weighted and CPI is coming out, that it's possible that that portion here will keep PCE low. I, that's a stretch to me. But there is an argument there, right? So you always want to look at the flip side of the argument. I would argue that healthcare services, if you look at your healthcare premiums and what's going on there right now, they're, they're running pretty high, guys. And if you look at financial services and insurance, they're pretty high right now. Matter of fact, certain insurance companies are literally leaving states and certain people are talking about California and Florida and their insurance premiums and what's going on there and they're running in the premiums. That will be, or problems rather, that'll be effective in PCE. If to even overlay this, if you take a look at names like Progressive and you look at how these names are just exploding or you look at Aflac, right? I mean, it's all connected, right? You look at these names, I mean, it's really very difficult to look at these names and go, well, do you think that these stocks are making more money because they're dropping the premiums? No, they're, they're making more money because they're raising the premiums. That's going to be in PCE. So again, my worst case scenario, really, the way that I'm looking at it from a worst case scenario is this. I think that if you get to a position where all of a sudden GDP drops, but then we have a situation where the PCE is higher, you're landlocked. There's not a lot you can do there. And that's going to be an issue for us. And that's definitely something that's on my radar. And it certainly should be on your radar as well as something that should be an issue. Um, if we look at underlying names, you're trying to see some levels of bouncing here. We really didn't see a tremendous amount of bounces. Microsoft tried and failed, in my opinion. Where, where was the beef, as that lady used to say in the ad? If anybody remembers that, you can comment below and let me know. But where was the beef? So XLF, that's where it was. XLE. These names all reverse today. They all look beautiful. See how that reversed right there? Did the undercut and pulled the flim flam. Meanwhile, I'm sitting over here trying to trade NVIDIA for pennies. So what, what's happening here is this. We're starting to rotate, right? And this is what's happening. We are rotating. Well, what about DPST? What about regionals? I'm glad you asked. This is setting up to move. The one thing that it needed to do for me to actually take it seriously was start closing above the 55. Now, the question is, do I want to buy DPST after it just moved 10% ahead of GDP? And then guess what? I'm going to say the word landlocked again because PCE on Friday. Let's say PCE shows that it's super high and he's not, and, and therefore there'll be no cuts. Let's just devil's advocate. You're, you're stuck till Monday morning. There's not a whole heck of a lot you're going to do there, right? So when you start putting the pieces together, you can see while this weekend, when you start looking at the volume, despite being up, when we really get into the volume, I just changed, there it is. Where's the volume? Well, today you had it. So somebody thinks something's going on. And when you start going through the sectors, that's when you really start to realize it, right? Because we haven't had volume. So why today? I think it's because one of two things, something leaked. Is it GDP or is it PCE? But something obviously leaked. If we go here and take a look at all these sectors, and we're going to keep this one short and sweet and to the point, but if we go and take a look at all these sectors, and let's turn this into a line chart here and remove all these drawings, and let's pull this bad boy back, slide that that way, and then go from there. Um, bu -bu -bu -bum. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Yeah, I'm not going to get it that way. I'll have to do it this way. Let me drop it to a five so that we can get in here. Bum, bum, bum. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the major sectors from the 27th on, and I just think it's going to be cleaner to do it this way, quite frankly. Here we are with XME, XLU, XLRE, and XBI. So all of a sudden, we're rotating again. Tech is down here, clouds down here, Qs are down here, XLK, XLC. The SPY outperformed all of tech today, the cloud names. Everything that didn't outperform was just the socks, financials, basic materials, energy. You have to look at this. This is just absolutely crazy to me what's going on here. Watch this. When you start to see what's really going on out there, look at this with GE. And look at how GE just keeps breaking out. This is what you're dealing with now, this kind of stuff. And it's just been literally just a straight line since 24. I mean, it's just, it's literally straight up. Right? We've had, you've had no worries and now you're hitting another new high coming into earnings. And what's crazy is it's not just even 
that we're dealing with what? The dollar. The, some of these names are just ripping. If you look at the dollar, it really shouldn't be like this. Like the dollar should be having some sec, you know, some say in this. But when you look at XLI, it's just been straight up. Let's take a look at Caterpillar. You take a look at Deer, right? Deer is kind of trying to figure out what it wants to be when it grows up. Not today, not anymore. And now we're starting to see those moves. So why are we seeing this? You know, I'm just going to tell you, I don't have all the answers to this. I don't know why we're being, we're, all of a sudden these industrials are so hot. I'll figure it out probably this weekend when I start diving into all the research. But there's something going on here in, today that made them hot. Now, XLF, I get. And you can see the XLF move. We can see the Goldman breakout, right? And what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to prep you for tomorrow and how to handle yourself tomorrow so that you kind of have a game plan and you know what to watch. You have to watch GDP. You have to watch the reaction. You have to know that you better be prepped for Friday because you are locked. But you look at you look at Goldman today and you look at that breakout. You look at JP Morgan today and we look at that breakout. And this all looks fantastic. At the same time, what are we seeing? These names are moving. Energy names, right, are setting up to break out and they're pushing. Then you have all the Argentinian names and how they're setting up. They broke out, retested, and now they're sitting there. Go look at all those banks. This is one that we've been in for a while. I just recently added to this. We got in first in, in around four dollars, and these things are setting up. So what's what is happening? Why are we seeing XBI lead today? Well, let's just pop in the very simple moving averages. I use a 12, a 22, and a 55. What will you see here? What would you notice? The fact that we can't really stay below that 55. We broke that 55. We should have completely broken down. A matter of fact, I actually had a short on here because it was so obvious that it was going to break down. What well, was obvious to me, maybe should have been obvious to the sector because it certainly wasn't. And then it just reversed. Now look at it. And now if you were to drop this on a five minute chart, watch this. This is just, it's staggering this move just out of nowhere. I mean, literally out of nowhere. And then boom, you just, you broke out, put this on a bear chart. So we just take a look at it. And then out of nowhere, you just form this other base right here. And that's it. It's on. Comes back, retest, 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 boom. This is very different behavior than what you would expect from something that is this interest rate sensitive, right? You wouldn't expect this. Now I can see the MJ moving right? This was pretty obvious that this was setting up. You had above average volume yesterday. This was actually from the notes. If you're on the wait list, bear with me. I'll have time to put out more invitations this weekend uh, on the long holiday weekend uh, and get that going with the wait list and get more people in the room. If you are interested, just look for the, if, if you are, make sure you're on the list, link in description. But in regards to this, take a look at that. Just look at how you're moving. I mean, you just, it's a straight shot. You go take a look at MSOS right? Same thing. Look at the breakout. So this is what's going on. Hope you found this helpful. That's it.